Once a month or so, we invite Dr. David McKenzie to Studio 4 to offer advice on love, sex, partnerships, and on studies about such things. Dr. McKenzie is a theologian and a family counselor and sex therapist. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. David McKenzie back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Merry Christmas. Same to you. And apparently, there's such a thing as holy sex. <laughs> I, I know there's a thing uh, such as no sex, mm -hmm. yeah. but holy sex, really? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Douglas Todd uh, wrote an article, I think it was a week ago, about mm -hmm. uh, four uh, young women who claim to be virgins and are actually uh, promoting this in their lifestyle and are looking for the right husbands for themselves. And it's a phenomenon that I think maybe we even touched on in past interviews. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's a very interesting thing that's going on, mainly grasped by more fundamentalist evangelical churches. Um, Abstinence. Abstinence, yeah. I mean, there are some positive things I want to say about it. One thing is that it teaches young people about self-respect and respect for others. Mm -hmm. It teaches them about the consequences of their behavior. But there are also some negative and downsides to it. And I even saw, read one article in which five-year-old girls are taking these vows with their fathers. They go to daddy little girl dances and they take these vows. The problem with that is that when you put it into a child that early of taking a vow, if in fact they meet someone and they do have sex later on in their late teens, right. early 20s, there's this profound guilt that they have to suffer with, that they've broken a promise. Mm. And uh, I, I really think it makes sex a much more shadowy uh, event rather than the joy and the pleasure that, that well, is meant to give us. One of the studies suggests that couples who don't have sex before marriage are happier and more stable. Now, how they figure that out, I don't know. Yeah, uh, actually, one of um, a young woman who did her uh, thesis on this at, um, at the local university. Um, uh, in terms of reading the methodology, I found trouble with the methodology. It seemed to be slanted towards fi finding that <laughs> result. Right. Um, but um, um, the the studies I have read and, and the reading, the literature that I have read, said that there seems to be no correlation with uh, whether you have sex before marriage or after. But the question becomes: Is it premarital sex or pre-ceremonial sex? When does the marriage actually begin? Now, traditionally in Orthodox Christianity. In the early stages, a man took a woman for a wife, and it was later that the priest blessed it. Uh, for instance, in Lutheranism uh, in Norway, a uh, hundred years ago, men would order male order brides. These brides would come. They would go up to these long fjords and work with their, their partners to do the farm. They would have sex. They would have children. They were loyal to each other. And about every three to four years, the local Lutheran pastor would come through these little villages mm -hmm. and marry them long after they'd been with each other. So marriage is very fluid. Um, my wife and I, for instance, uh, said our vows to each other long before we stood in a church, which was for the public to see. Right, so the commitment was there, Absolutely. all of that was there. I have a friend who was having a mature relationship, and she decided that she would marry this man, but not have sex with him until she married him. Well, the girlfriends went a little nuts. We said, <laughs> what? You can't. <laughs> like, you yeah. have to, like, yeah. have a little fun before, because what if? Yeah. yeah. What if it's just awful. <laughs> well, I, I, I know it's, I don't we would never I, have said that at 16, but yeah. at a certain age you say. But sex changes. I mean, you can be with a, a hot lover in the first part, but then mm. have sexual problems later. Sure. It takes a couple, an average of about three to five years to adjust mm. sexually. So the idea that, you know, you want to try them out to see if they fit, it just doesn't make sense from a marriage point of view. Sure, and it should get better it's as a, you well, get to a, know each other and all of that. It's and, a relationship. Or maybe it gets worse. Well, uh, you're, what a, what a, you're a sex therapist. <laughs> but bad or worse, you work with each other. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, my concern in this is that it puts a dark mood on sex so that soon it's kind of heartening back to the days when virginity was this prize in which you present it to your right. husband. A lot of people don't understand the context in which that arose. For instance, when I was a priest and I'd prepare couples for marriage, I would go through the marriage ceremony. And uh, the marriage ceremonies changed, by the way, over the years. They no longer have uh, towards your husband love uh, and obey. They took that out. Yes, thank goodness. Uh, but that comes from a tradition where, you know, daddy gives little girl away to husband. Mm -hmm. Once they learn where that comes from, they're quite appalled because a father owned his daughter. And when he passed the daughter in the wedding ceremony over to the husband, he passed over her inheritance, passed over her legal uh, and uh, 
and uh, monetary uh, resources. The husband mm -hmm. owned her, both legally and physically. Up till only 20 years ago, a man could rape his wife if he was married well, to her. Well, and as you know, in some countries, that is still going still on. Still the case. Still the case. Yeah. Uh, but a vow of chastity uh, in mm -hmm. the... Uh, early times, Victorian mm -hmm. age, somebody, mm -hmm. a woman would take a vow of chastity, or mm -hmm. they had chastity belts, mm -hmm. all of that. <laughs> and I mean, if there are four Fraser Valley virgins who want good men and holy sex, sure. it's okay. Oh, I'm not, I mean, I'm whatever, not against that. Whatever flips your skirt. Sure. No, I, I, well, I, if you want to save yourself in, in a particular Christian understanding of mm -hmm. sex and marriage, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But to hold that up as the ideal, I think, is, um, is wrong-footed. Right. Or as a connection to marital contentment. That's right. Absolutely. If I did mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that has yeah. something to do with happiness or stability or marital contentment? I don't believe, I don't believe the literature supports that. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm happy yeah. to hear that. Oh, good. <laughs> I, I'm on your side this morning. Okay, wonderful. Now, um, this time of year, slightly mm -hmm. crazy, yeah. uh, emotional, highly emotional. Yeah. Even if you're not a Christian, there's something about Absolutely. the holidays and the celebration and the expectation. Yeah. People experience more loss around winter. Um, I uh, read an, an article in the paper a few years ago that, in fact, a study showed that older, there are more older people who die around the winter time and Christmas. So, I mean, in my own life, for instance, I've experienced two major losses at Christmas time. It's mm. not a pleasant time of the year for me. Uh, the mm. other issue is if you're alone and you've got uh, other, everybody else is with family and so forth and you have nobody nearby or have no one, uh, the whole season emphasizes getting together, happiness. Right. Um, a lot of yeah, arguments Norman happen. Rockwell did it on yeah. the cover of that Saturday <laughs> evening post. I, I think he's responsible. I think he's responsible, but it's so mm -hmm. true. You know, I drove mm -hmm. by a Starbucks the other day, and it said, open uh, December 25th. Ah. And I thought, good. Yeah. Because there are sure. people who get up, and uh, there is nobody yeah. at home. Yeah. And you're by yourself, and you've got yeah. your mini tree. Yeah. <laughs> well, or not. But, I mean, to show you, when I was um, a pastor uh, years ago, I used to have a ceremony just before Christmas called Christmas When It Hurts. It was the week, the last mm. week of Advent. Mm. And that was in profoundly attended. I mean, a lot of people came out to that. So Christmas is not an easy time for many people. Um, my suggestion to those who are alone and they're thinking of, of having Christmas alone and they don't want that, you need to be proactive. For instance, when I was in the church, we had lots of invitations to New Year's Eve parties. Le leaving the church, doing my doctorate, getting my own practice, we don't have many of those invitations. No. So my wife and I said, we're going to go out and we're going to find a place to go dancing and have dinner. Mm -hmm. And we do locally here every year. Sure. And change tradition. Uh, this change year tradition. we go for Chinese food. Exactly. And we do something we mm -hmm. haven't always done because yeah. all the kids are gone and, and we're free. Mm -hmm. So the kids are away, as you mm -hmm. know. They're in but, New York. They're in the But Paris. you need to be They're proactive and, you know, be a pain to people. I get Ask it. Them. But what do you do? So now you uh, say first you're married, second second you're married, yeah. and you've got the family thing. Yeah. And everybody has their own tradition. Yep. And he says, we open our presents on Christmas <laughs> Eve. And she says, we don't. So, <laughs> you remember know, how to find the middle. <laughs> remember I said to you once, I think I said it, in marriage, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. Exactly. So you talk about it and you negotiate. You mm -hmm. negotiate everything. Most couples will end up having Christmas with one side and then next year Christmas with the other. Right. It's a tough job. It sure is. And yeah. who's coming and who's not coming to the Christmas dinner and then feelings are hurt and then Grandpa yeah. gets drunk and <laughs> I'm telling you. You had one of those in your family too? Oh, we had a whole family of alcoholics. <laughs> it makes Christmas <laughs> even more exciting. You must come from a Scottish family. <laughs> uh, well, a little Irish. A, little, okay, a lot of the Irish. Yeah. And, you know, they get drunk at Christmas. Yeah. What yeah. can I tell you? Yeah. Well, it, it runs in the in the genes mm -hmm. and misbehave, yeah. and yeah. it's yeah. somehow yeah. it is what it is. It's never dull. I think uh, people um, I, people make Christmas or the holiday season what they need to make it. Mm. And I really believe in reaching out to friends and acquaintances to say, "Look, I'm going to be alone at Christmas. Could you invite me?" Or it's, right. there's nothing humiliating about that. No, it's, exactly. And when you are uh, newly divorced and the yeah. kids decide to go with dad, I've yeah. I've wow. had a couple of those. Christmases where the kids just aren't there. Yeah. So uh, you go to what we call Orphan Christmas, yeah. the gathering of people who are in your situation, sure, and sure. it works out just well. Right. Mm -hmm. Or gather, find a friend to go on a trip to Mexico or something. You, know, you don't exactly. have to stay that here sounds if good. you can afford it. Yeah. yeah. Now, and divorce at Christmas. Say you're like in a big mess at home, yeah. and you've decided to separate, but you're faking it. 
for the family, for the kids. Maybe you haven't told the mom and dad, yeah. uh, the, yeah. the parents. Yeah. Maybe no one knows. Maybe they do know. Haven't mm. told the children. Don't no. like each other, and you're pretending all swell because it's Christmas. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've dealt with couples just like that. Yeah. And um, most people can pull that off. Uh, most people can keep their own emotions in check. That's a, it's a very difficult mm -hmm. thing you're proposing there. Sure. Uh, but... Um, uh, Usually people pick that up at a subliminal level. They know something's going on. But um, right. you can surely get through that mm -hmm. one week of Christmas without becoming gorillas on each other. And, um, surely. And I think, it's all, I think it's also important in terms of looking at the way you're relating to each other. Uh, I don't think any divorce has to be that miserable. And I think it takes two people to be adults and come together and say, look, we mm -hmm. need help. To, we're in a lot of pain. We can't do this on our own. We need help to do this. The children don't deserve us to be gorillas on each right, other. Right, exactly. But heightened expectations, and sometimes it goes back to, I don't know what it is about this time of year, but you remember what happened to you when you were five, or when you were 10, and you got a doll from your aunt, and how wonderful that was. And I'm sure our Christmases were no better when we were 10 or 12 than they are when we're 50 plus. Yes. But we somehow have this but listen to selective memory. But listen to the music. The listen. feeling. The I know. But White Christmas. The Irving exactly, Berlin. Exactly. You know, I'll the be Nat home for King Christmas. Cole. Exactly. It, mm -hmm. it it draws us back to that, and it sets up this ideal of what family should be. Whereas family is defined in many many ways. Uh, you can have a single person who belongs to a family of his or her choice. Right. Uh, you can have people who belong to a big Italian family, and they all have to get together. Mm -hmm. Family is defined or in the, the way Greeks. you want to. Or the Greeks. I know. Yes. But uh, say you're just not that person, and you're with somebody who is, and you don't know what to do, and you don't know what to say, and, and he says, we always on Christmas Eve do this. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's okay in a couple to say, you know what, darling, you go do that? even though it's Christmas, because there's a lot, a lot of pressure for us to be together, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? But it seems to me, like any other time of year, you would say, okay, you go to the hockey game, I'll, yeah, you know, yeah. go to the well, dance. I'll tell you, one of the things I, I enjoy, but I, I don't enjoy Christmas, I'm a humbug at it, and that yeah. comes from a long history of what I, some of mm. which I just referred to. But uh, I know for my grandchildren and my kids, Christmas is important, so I pull it off with them, or try to, and I think we do a good job. But um, uh, for the most part, I think Christmas is a time where many people just get through. And uh, they make it work for them because other people are depending on it. Right. And uh, Christmas is a time, I feel, when it's the one opportunity where family can gather together. Some people have family reunions in the summer. Kind of our mm -hmm. family reunion is in the winter. Sure, and take the pressure off the present thing. Just oh, take yeah, the pressure that off. Is, yeah. Well, that's why American Thanksgiving is so popular in the USA because you don't have to do presents and all of that. And That's as true. I said to somebody else, having been raised in the States, if you don't show up for Thanksgiving, you're in big, <laughs> big trouble. If you don't show up for Christmas, no one cares. Scott. <laughs> well, so I was just down knows? in Texas for their Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I go every year now. Well, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, the Yanks, they do get carried away. Yeah, yeah. But Thanksgiving is very important, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, happy holidays. Thank Merry you. Christmas season. Greetings. Yeah, all Bah humbug. Things. Yeah. <laughs> happy Hanukkah. All those happy things. Hanukkah. And yeah. you can always go to the mission, to the gospel mission or something, and serve meals. Yes, yes. Which My is, wife and I support that. It's, that's it's great. It's a great to organization. Do. Sure is. Yeah. Thanks, Manny. Nice to see you. Dr. David McKenzie, he is a couples counselor and sex therapist. And remember, you can catch all of our conversations on YouTube or follow us on Twitter at Fanny Studio 4.